so sorry 833 number you're a fucking robot anyway <laughs> hello this is a call from the canada revenue agency and we want to let you know you're totally fucked give us money like that's how those calls go but instead i answered the call like that and it, it's 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 especially scary when a human being does that because um what do human beings have that robots don't a creativity uh -huh. okay now <laughs> robots have simulated creativity right no ass hat have you ever heard dubstep made by a robot it's fucking stupid okay now 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 a symphony the beauty the expression it takes a human body to compose something of that beauty to take all of your emotions and put them into one place through a filter like coffee the grounds the earth the experience that you've gone through you take the water of creativity pour it through the bean juice and then you have a symphony i like when people describe creativity like that as if it's not just like me being like what the fuck is going on <laughs> like, like, like I feel, I feel like when people now I say people in a very general sense. I could also be talking about lizards. Now, when people talk about creativity, they paint it in very vivid, very beautiful pictures. And then, and then, and then, and then, what's it like in real life? I'm like, everything is burning, and 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 this is what it looks like. Huh? Has this guy cracked? No, because I was born cracked. Okay. Like, I, 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 <laughs> I feel like a lot of people, I'm making a lot of general statements here, are waiting to see people crack. It's August 7th. <clears throat> I don't record these when you listen to them. Thought I'd let you know it's not a live show. I've tried it. Didn't work. It was a big mistake, but also I learned. Okay, it wasn't a big mistake, but it's August. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Everyone's very certain. Everyone's got very, very, very certain opinions on what is happening right now. For example, I talked to people at the comedy show last night that I went to. I did a show at the Keto Caveman Cafe. Shout out Ross from Comedy. <laughs> but um, I was backstage, as, as you are. Right, which is actually not backstage because the stage is, it's in a basement, and so I was actually in the back, back, um, and I was talking to this lady. She was very certain businesses are going to be closing again. I don't know where she's getting this information from. Maybe it's going to happen. Maybe I should just believe her because when people told me at first that things were going to be closing down back in like February or March, I was like, ha ha. Also, I'm going to pretend to cough on you because that's funny. And now, we've been through one wave of the businesses closing. Not an enjoyable time for many. Been okay. We have Serb here in Canada. Now, Serb sounds like something you insert rectally, um, but it's not. It's actually something that helps you rectally. No, um, there's no rectums involved, act actually. But um, Serb is the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. And it's pretty fucking chill. You get two thousand bucks a month, and for someone who's paying seven fifty a month in a basement suite, pretty tight. So get my rent paid, groceries, eat out a little bit if the restaurants are still open, buy a pair of shoes. Pandemic's not so bad in Canada. The thing is, I'm not gonna talk about that. <laughs> I was gonna, Toby, I was gonna say I didn't make enough money. I don't want evidence of that online. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut that part out. I said some things I have to. I had. I had to cut out. But <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really not looking for, for for this episode to be an expose on on what's happening. So I'm at 11 minutes of recording. I really don't know how long I should be recording this because. Eventually, I have to leave for work. I might just make this like a really short, like 20 minute episode. Maybe just like talk for eight more minutes. Or maybe I just like be late for work. I think that's more likely. So, <laughs> we're good. 
<laughs> We're gonna... <sighs> they might. No, well, the, the, Jovi said he hopes my boss sees this, but the thing is that there are people from my work that do follow me, and I'm like, why? <laughs> like, my brother showed my grandma an episode of this, and she thinks I'm a changed person. She's like, Vancouver's really changed him. <laughs> this, this is not the young baby boy I knew, the pleasant man. Now he's crazy creative man. He's been doing drugs. He's going crazy. He's talking in front of a camera about nonsense. He's talking about doing nitrous oxide in space. I haven't actually done that. Okay, getting in space is really fucking hard. You know what's even harder? Getting nitrous oxide, probably. That, the amount that I talk about it makes it seem like I, I actually do this. So like, I'm kind of worried that like people will actually think this. <laughs> It's just words that come out of my brain. Mm, yeah. So where do you go from there, right? Crazy start. I want to talk about a little bit. Loading. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. I want to talk about a little adventure I had yesterday. Okay? Are you ready? You listening? Your ears are perked up? You stop doing your chores for a sec? Stop. Can I have your attention? Hello. Okay. Hi. It's me, Josh. So... I went on a little adventure yesterday, and when I say little, I mean big. I mean big. I, I mean, I mean massive. Like, okay. So, we, as in me and a couple friends, we went and we biked up into the mountains, and that itself was an adventure. We met up in the city. Um, we didn't think the day was going to happen because it was raining. And so naturally you think when it's raining, it's going to rain for the rest of the day. It's going to be wet. You don't want to just, you, you don't want to, you don't want to go outside. It's wet. You know, guess what? Stupid water dries, especially when the sun's shining. So we ended up meeting up and we, from downtown, biked through the park, across the bridge, I'm trying to give you an idea of Vancouver geography. There's a nice, huge bridge, the Lionsgate Bridge. I wonder if Lionsgate Entertainment or Lionsgate Pictures, there's like a, like a, like a media company. I wonder if they're named after that. Anyway, we went across that bridge um, and up a very, very steep fucking hill. Um, at one point, one of my friend's tires popped, so we had to stop. But lucky for us, there was a bike shop nearby. And um, there's also a bakery, so I got a bunch of like baked treats. That was pretty dope. So um, it was really tough biking up the hill, and I'm making this really interesting for you, as I can, as 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 we can all tell. Um, but the real adventure began when we got into the mountains, and there's a little place called Lynn Canyon. Now, Lynn Canyon is not your average canyon. When you think canyon, you think like the Grand Canyon. It ain't that. This is like lush, verdant, rocky splendor where where you look around and all you see is delicious vegetation. And and when you go there, you want to take off your shoes and walk barefoot because because you're a fucking hippie. And 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 you want to like feel the earth and like the best part, you get into Lynn Canyon. It's technically like a hike. If you're a tourist, it's a hike. For me, it's a walk cuz I'm fit. But you get to the place, you walk down some stairs because the suspensions bri suspension bridge is suspended, expelled. There's a suspension bridge there that goes across the canyon, and um, a lot of people are sketched out by it because it's a shaky bridge. I get it. When I was a kid, I was afraid of ghosts and goblins and shaky bridges, but it turns out there's adults who are also afraid of ghosts and goblins and shaky bridges. And <laughs> I've fucked with them once or twice. Not like, yo, man, I'll fuck with you. No, 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 like, I'm fucking with you. Like, like um, one time, there was, <laughs> there was a lineup to get across the bridge in the pre-COVID times. Um, and there was a guy who was, like, very clearly, like, feeling an amount of trepidation to cross the bridge. He was feeling afraid, I could tell. Um, and I stepped on the bridge. And of course, the bridge shakes. It's a suspension bridge. And I went, 
oh, guys, that's not supposed to happen. And then he goes, what? And, and I actually ended up feeling pretty bad because, because he, he could still be on the other side of that bridge, right? I just kept walking and laughing, and eventually I started feeling bad because making his fears into a reality. But <laughs> anyway, that's my little story about the suspension bridge. But the suspension bridge is suspended. It's closed because COVID, because it's so thin that if you rolled a pair of dice on it, high chance that the dice would fall off. So that's about how wide that thing is. Um, so instead of going across the suspension bridge, we went down the hill and there's this little creek or river and there's a bunch of rocks on it and you can just hop across the rocks to get up the bridge, to get up the river. You can hop across the rocks to get up the river. And that's the dopest shit. Like you take off your shoes and you're just rock hopping. Like you're, you are just, Flow state, I'm rubbing my eyes. Keep your hands off of your eyes. Can't you see this? You're in the middle of a pandemic. (laughs) But but, um, you just get to enter the flow state where you're just focused on placing your feet on rocks. There's no problems, no troubles, no fears, only rocks and river. And you rock hop far enough up the river cross a couple logs that are laid across the river and by logs i mean like very thin trees that are shaky actually my friend liam um as he was crossing one of the trees fucking fell but because he does parkour very talented athlete he lowered himself hugged the tree and spun around to the bottom and that was the extent of his life-saving skills. Like, he could have just fallen off into the river and potentially hurt himself. But instead, he clasped. He grasped onto that log and then just, like, saved himself. It was dope. So we went further up the river. And then you get to this, like, little kind of pond lakey area. Pond lakey. A little pond lakey. And um, you can swim in it. The thing is, you're in the mountains. So obviously, that pond is from a glacier. So it's freaking cold. You like frick? I'll say frick instead. It's freaking cold. And you get in, and um, if you stay in for long enough, your shoulders will, t- will, will turn blue. That's what happened to me. Because I'm like, yeah, you know, I used to do cold exposure. I used to sit in this water for, for, for 10 minutes and feel nothing. Yeah, that was old Josh. Now me, current Josh, not used to the cold exposure. I went and I sat in that water for like 10 minutes and, and, and I was uncontrollably shivering and, and literally my shoulders had turned blue. Like <laughs> my friend Liam looked at me and you know he's my friend because I've said it. He looked at me and he said, your shoulders shouldn't be that color. And I was like, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I should get out of the water. And, and then I also realized you're not supposed to be shivering when you're in the cold water. And you can control shivering to an extent, but the, the, the cold that I was at, they were like, yo, stop shivering. I was like, I can maybe stop for a second, but then I'm going to keep shivering. So I got out, I got out and we, we dried off and we jumped across the rocks and that was fun as fuck. Like I realized this is what 24 year old Josh does. He just meets up with his friends who are also adults, and we just, like, strip down to our swimsuits, swim in the water, and jump on rocks. And we were doing, like, parkour challenges on these rocks. It was fun as fuck. I was like, dude, younger Josh? Jealous as fuck. Because he thought, when he become <coughs> when he become an adult, which to him was over 18. I'm still waiting to become an adult. I'm 24. But younger Josh thought, when you turn 18 and become an adult, that's the end of the fun. You gotta get a job, and then and then and then you have unprotected sex, and then you make a kid, and then you gotta work even more to pay for the kid. But like, I'm 24, no kids, as far as I know, and then I'm just jumping on rocks with my friends. How fucking dope, hey? Ha huh? But then the real challenge. <laughs> this was life or death. This was the trial. This was scary. Because the water was so cold, I didn't want to go back in. But there's a funny little challenge where if you jump into that water, 
there was a free swim through this ice cold water. And if you get to the end, there's a waterfall and you can climb up the waterfall and hang out at the top. And we decided to do it. And by we, I mean my friends. And I had decided I wasn't going to do it because I was like, this is probably a really bad idea. Like I could probably die doing this, like swimming in this water. Like I could feel my body being like, hey, maybe no swimming. But when you're in the middle of the water, there's nothing to grab onto or anything. Like there's, you couldn't even touch in the bottom. Spoiler alert, I ended up doing it. But um, I was like, yeah, I seem, this seems like the type of idea where like, there's like irreversible changes made to my body or like I die. Um, so I sat down for a little bit, watched my friends walking away, jumping across the rocks to get to this challenge. And I was like, am I really going to watch my friends go on an adventure and not join them? Do I really have that? much regard for my personal safety that like I don't want to risk it for the biscuit and then I thought it's 2020 COVID's happening life's pretty crazy maybe it doesn't maybe maybe I don't need to worry so much about my own safety <laughs> maybe maybe I should just fucking do it and see what happens have an adventure risk myself so we did it. They flipped into the water. I got into the water and it's like a free swim through there. I can feel my body like slowing down. There was some, there was like a, like a hot young fit couple our age who also wanted to do this challenge. And like, you could see like, they were really going through a time doing that. I was like, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Keep your body moving. And so you get to a checkpoint where you can stand on top of a rock and then you have to get back in and swim again. And you have to swim against the current of the waterfall. And there's points where like, there's basically like vacuums of water, water vacuums, and, and you can get like pushed against the wall or like sucked under or whatever, but you have to like push up against this wall and go against the current and find footholds under the water if you can. And then eventually you get to the side of the waterfall and it's like a wet rock climb to get to the top and you just like got to figure it out. And there were points in the water where I was just like, my body is fucking failing me. It was terrifying. Like I confronted, like I confronted my my own mortality a few times while doing that. It was really cool. And then we climbed to the top of the waterfall and we're cold. We're sitting on this rock and we're like, shit, we did it. And that was dope. That was that was such an adventure. And I, like that got me thinking. I could use a few more adventures in my life. Like parkour is an adventure and yada yada yada. But like going out into nature and like fucking risking it. That's fun. I like that shit. It's dangerous. You can get hurt for sure. But like, yeah, okay, but it's fine, right? And, 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 and it was really rewarding and I didn't die. There was a few moments though where I was like, whoa, <laughs> hello, deaf. Um, but I, I, did, I did get back and then um, I started thinking about my comedy set that night and I was thinking like maybe I'll tell stories about um, that adventure uh, and I got way too in my head thinking about like trying to write jokes. And then as I was hopping across the rocks to get back to our bikes, I fell in like three times, which is like, like evidence that like, yeah, you got to focus on what you're on the task at hand. Like, especially when you're doing something like hopping on wet rocks, it was raining also, by the way. So it was, we were not only were we cold and unclothed barefoot, it was raining and we were jumping on wet rocks in the river. To any mom, it's a bad idea, but to any son, fucking awesome. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I just kind of like my mind kind of trailed off a few times and I just like fell in the water and I was kind of wet and a little bit miserable, but, but water dries. Like it, we were going to get on our bikes and it, it was going to get hot again and, you know, my shoes and socks were wet and stuff, but fuck it. We went and got burgers after and that's, that was super rewarding. Just like sitting down and just like mowing down on some like real shitty five guys burgers and fries, Cajun fries. Bad decision, by the way. Don't eat spicy food before a comedy set because like I get nervous. And then if I've eaten spicy food, then just like I've just, I've got the shits. But the thing was we were at five guys at like six and my comedy set was at nine. And I was downtown and I didn't plan on coming home, even though I was like in wet clothing. I smelled and like I had basically diarrhea. So you got to find a bathroom, you know, that's it. So I hung out in five guys for like two. Well, I, I hung out at the art gallery, watching people break dance. And then went back to five guys, used their bathroom like twice again, four times total. 
even though I didn't mention the two times before that. So I used the bathroom four times. Um, big time bathroom fanatic here. But um, yeah, and then I went and did the comedy set, and it was my first comedy set, uh, my first five minutes is, since February, since, since COVID began. And a lot of people, a lot of the podcasts I follow have been saying that, like, yeah, live comedy is pretty much dead because of COVID. But it's still happening a little bit. I'm happy to get on stage and, you know, face the audience and they want to laugh and I want to make them laugh and then, you know, maybe I've got something fun to say. And I got a couple laughs. I recorded my set and stuff and that was, that was really, really cool. And now I get to listen to it, shamefully, because it's hard to listen to yourself. It's hard for me to edit the podcast or whatever. Um, oh, it looks like the camera's going to die. So, uh, but yeah, I got the comedy set done and that was dope as fuck. But um, yeah, this has been episode 17. I got to get to work. Um, lucky number 17 for me. It's my favorite. Thank you for tuning in. Bye now. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs>